Okay, so can we talk about the, the, the actual procedure? So I, I understand that, you know, at a high level, you're extracting the 50% of the, of the plasma. So, so first of all, so plasma is 55% of the blood. Is that right? It's about 55%. So when you say you're 50%, is that 50% of the plasma or 50% of the blood total? Um, and then... Uh, so blood is composed of plasma and cells. Mm. So the liquid component of blood is plasma. It is not 50% of the blood. It's all of your liquid part of the blood. All mm. content. And that includes albumin, which is the main protein carrier and the main kind of important thing for blood, so-called rheology that mm. your blood vessels are nice and plump and the blood flows in the right direction and, and at the, the right speed. And then you have cells. So most abundant cells are red blood cells or erythrocytes, and they're also platelets. Mm. None of them have nuclei. And then you have leukocytes, B cells, T cells, myeloid, monocytic cells. So when we say 50%, we remove 50% of the volume of your liquid component of your entire blood system. So if we throw out all of the liquid part of the blood with all of the proteins there and all of the proteolipids and- Yeah, yeah so in humans, when they run through the machine that they can, they can set it for any amount they want. I, I believe it's, um, they do more than 50% with, with humans because it's a, it's a continuous process, right? So, um, and there's, you know, you can just get a big bag of saline albumin and, mm -hmm. and just and a big waste bag and just keep dumping out liquid waste and adding. <laughs> um, yeah, very much like add, Adding the, sa yeah. the saline albumin and the, yeah. and the red blood cells and the white blood cells, they keep going back into the body. So platelets, they keep going back to the body. For the mice, we, we just, we did it, I don't know, uh, I don't think, I don't even think there was a whole lot of argument in lab meeting. We said, well, we'll, we'll, we'll try because we had done, we had done trans, basically transfusion experiments back and forth with the mice mm. and the parabiosis where they're joined together. We said, well, in those cases, it, it approaches 50% equilibration, right? So each, each partner has about half the blood of the other partner and they've lost half their blood to the, to mm -hmm. the other part, right? So, so we said, well, we'll do the same thing with the neutral blood exchange. It's just that the blood won't be young or won't be old that they're getting. It's basically, it's their own aged red blood cells and white blood cells, but then the liquid fraction is this purified albumin mm -hmm. saline that doesn't, doesn't have an age. I guess there's, I guess there's a paper that was published recently where they, they decided to give that an age of young, but I don't think that's really, no, it's really not bor the borne out by the, by the definition, right? Yet. It's, it's, it's far, purified course. protein, right? It's okay. you know, 90, 99% okay. pure something like that. So, so, and, and then again, yeah, 100% of the red blood cells remain, 100% of the white blood cells remain, and half of the, the plasma liquid fraction is thrown out and replaced by this saline al purified albumin. So how do you separate the, the plasma from the blood cells? Super easy. So, so uh, cells in, in blood are, are denser. So you, you uh, use centrifuge the... Mm -hmm subject uh -huh. the, the blood samples to centripetal forces Same. and and then the red blood cells and the white blood cells uh, settle to the bottom and then the, the liquid on top is the plasma. Uh -huh. Right, okay. And the machine does that, for people, the machine does that like like continuously. There's uh -huh. a, you know, like some kind of drum or something like that it goes around and around. Liquid comes in, liquid goes out, and that happens. Uh -huh. right. And then cells are mixed with the new liquid and put back into the vein, uh -huh. into different vein into a different way. Yeah, so like one in each arm. Uh -huh. right. mm -hmm. But um, for the mice, it was just one vein and it goes back and forth, back and forth, but mm -hmm. in and out, in and out, right? small ones. Right, yeah. So the, the paper that we were recently talking about is uh, the brain, really. It was mostly looking at the renewing the brain, uh, rejuvenating the brain. But you did, uh, I thought it was an earlier paper, but you did one with looked at the kind of three germ layers because you said mm -hmm. okay, these are the three germ layers that people are made of. And so, and then you took each one tissue from each or a number of tissues from each. And then uh, can you talk about, uh, and looked at how those were rejuvenated. So can you talk a little, a little bit about that experiment? Because that's kind of more whole body than. Yeah. So I started kind of 
confusingly when you asked about brain talking about that paper, which was published last May. And, uh, and we look usually at muscle, liver, and brain mm. since early 2000s when we did parabiosis throughout our laboratory research because they represent mesoderm, which is muscle, and then endoderm, which is liver, and ectoderm, which is brain. Mm. And so what we wanted to see is that we do not just rejuvenate random combination of tissues or just one tissue that people sometimes do, but we rejuvenate tissue from each germ layer, which will be very significant. Mm. And the reason it's significant because stem cells that repair muscle are very different from stem cells that repair brain or liver. Mm. So we wanted to see that the regeneration and repair now is triggered regardless of those little details about stem cells. That is kind of a broad approach. Mm -hmm. we, we call it basically um, treating age-associated diseases as a class, kind of anti-aging antibiotic type. So that is the reason that we, we look at those three tissues. And also another reason is that those three tissues really succumb to aging in a very bad way and cause plethora of diseases. So it's important mm -hmm. to rejuvenate. If we rejuvenate liver, we rejuvenate numerous yeah. things in the body, right? And there's other tissues too. I mean, there's you know the heart and the kidneys. And, yeah. But we don't have expertise on that. So it's not that we didn't want to look at the heart. It's just that there's only so much time mm -hmm. to look at. At, at stuff and um, you know we, we, we you know encourage collaborators or whatever who, who are interested yeah. in and have their favorite tissue yeah even you know, even even brain we're not experts on so the, the last paper we had collaborators that were much had much greater expertise on, on brain and cognition and, and, and that kind of work I would disagree yeah. I say we are experts <laughs> on brain well, it's all but, it's all <laughs> and uh, and more we, the more we study brain which we did like the last 15 years, better experts we become, right? So we know a little bit about brain, we know more and more and more progressively and now even more. Um, and we got actually recently a great uh, collaborative grant from National Institute of Health to know more about the brain and rejuvenation of the brain with our colleagues from UC Santa Cruz and Stanford. Mm. But anyways, and actually for the heart, we, we also got um, uh, recently a good funding to study the cardiovascular system and heart rejuvenation. But, um, but what I started to say is that, yeah, so we look usually at three germ layers and mm -hmm. what we show in all of them is that regeneration becomes better. So we, are, we never look at whether there is less damage, we sometimes experimentally induce damage in animals, tissue damage in animals, but we show that the repair of the damage and regeneration becomes much, much younger and healthier for all of these tissues. Another hallmark is fibrosis. Aging sometimes is characterized as fibrotic disease and we see reduction of fibrosis in muscle and liver. Mm -hmm. And we see reduction of inflammation in muscle and in the brain. So there are certain you know, things which are improved regardless of what organ it is. Right, and, and do you see this, the stem cells more activated? Whenever we ask this question specifically, the answer is yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, easy. I hope that you found the video informative. Please do hit the thumbs up button, subscribe to our channel, and hit the bell button for any new video release notifications. Thank you so much for your kind support. I wish you all well, and we'll speak to you again soon.